if you're watching or listening to me right now, that means that I'm not there because we had our baby, and you have now lessons on the iPad. So you'll need to take some notes. So hopefully you've got your pencil, your pen, whatever you got. You'll need that and some paper. So uh, for the most part, you're going to find out that this is actually a nice kind of slow down for a little bit. We've had a lot of different topics in our chapters so far. And what we're going to do is we're going to really take these and and kind of focus in on a few items. Today, we're going to be talking about quadratic functions. This is in section 2.1. And then we're going to kind of talk about functions in general for a few minutes. And then we're going to really delve into um, some of the specifics with quadratics. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is just a little bit of vocabulary. Um, we're going to talk about polynomials. Uh, of degree n. What I mean by that is not just square, uh, like x squared, we're going to talk about x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, or even high polynomial period. We're going to talk about constants, which is the constant function is what we call a horizontal line. So there's an infinite number of them, but it's just the horizontal line. The linear function in general, that's it's just any line. It could be horizontal, it could be vertical, it could be um, just any general line. We also have the quadratic function. That's, of course, our parabola. Um, that would be x squared specifically, all varieties of x squareds. Um, in specific, in the parabola, the pieces of a parabola, we have what's called a vertex. We have an axis of symmetry. And we are going to explore the algebra and a little bit of the geometry behind parabolas and quadratic functions. But before we get to that, what I really want to do is talk about just set up the stage for what we call polynomials. Uh, if at any point in time you feel like I'm going too fast or you need to pause it to copy some of the notes down, um, please, you've got the pause button, use it. All right, so what we have here, this is an example of several functions, and we've talked a lot about different types of functions. Um, in the past chapter, we talked about um, the 12 different kinds of functions not all of them were polynomials and what I have here is I have four different functions and the question is what do you which one of these or maybe more than one is actually considered to be a polynomial and if it is why if it's not why not I want you to take a few seconds I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and I want you to write down the ones you think that are polynomials Okay, so I hope you, hope you made your guess. The polynomials are f of x and k of x. g of x and h of x are not polynomials. They fail two reasons. Um, polynomials must have no fractions. What I mean by fractions, I mean the, the, the x, the variable, can't be in the denominator. Of course, there's a fraction here, but there's no x in the, in the bottom. If I had had an x in the bottom of this fraction, then this wouldn't be a polynomial. Okay, um, so number one, you can't have a radical. That's why this one fails. You can't have an x in the denominator. That's number two. And g of x fails because I have a negative exponent. Negative exponents. If I were to rewrite this without a negative exponent, that really is six over x to the fourth power. Remember negative exponents mean I just flip that fraction over and so this this is a fraction hiding in plain view. You have to be careful about that. Okay so a couple of things and you're gonna wanna write a lot of this down because I, I didn't put every little detail into the PowerPoint so so write down a few of the pieces that we're talking about right now. What makes something a polynomial is the fact that it has whole number exponents it has no radical in the equation, and it has no variable in the bottom of any fractions that exist. 
those are some of the basic pieces that make something polynomials. Quadratics. Just to define a quadratic, um, this is your basic quadratic form. It's ax squared plus bx plus c. And we have used this any number of times. Um, a, b, and c are real numbers. Now, a, and that's a here, at that particular a can never be zero. That's the only one of the a, b, c that, that, that can't contain the value zero, can't be zero. Any of the other ones can be zero. We've had like 5x squared, and that was it. So b and c were zero. I could have 5x squared plus 2, or 5x squared plus 2x. Okay, A, B, and C are your values for the quadratic. The only condition is that A can never be zero. Okay, so if we were to go in here and label the axis of symmetry, okay, it says uh, when does it open up, when does it open down? The axis of symmetry is the line that goes right, th the vertical line that goes right through the origin. So if you actually were to write this down, uh, if I simply said find the axis of symmetry, or find the vertex in the axis of symmetry, then we can use our formula, negative b over 2a, and I've got that uh, on the screen on the next slide or so. And that's going to give me the actual axis of symmetry. If I go back and plug that value back into the equation, then I find the y coordinate in my vertex. The important part about opening up or down and I know this is a lot of, it's, this is a review for most of you, at least I hope it is. A controls whether the parabola opens up or down. If it's positive, the parabola is going to be opening upwards, just like you see on your screen here. If A happen to be negative, which we'll see in a little bit later, A, it's going to be opening down. Um, a also controls if it has been stretched or if there's a, a shrink involved in all this. Now, we're not really going to be exploring transformations so much as solving quadratics and, and talking about how to how to find their zeros. Um, there'll be a little bit of transformations but it really will be a, a, a very minor topic in this chapter. Alright, so here we go. I said earlier we we're going to look at the basic form. I've changed the format here. If we go back and look at the before, this is what we would call uh, standard form, or sometimes it's called quadratic form. This is what you would normally think of a quadratic as. What's more useful is this form. This is called vertex form because the vertex is very plainly vis uh, vi visible. HK, remember H changes, K stays the same. And so if I have it in this form, then it's really nice. I can graph it, I can talk about the transformations immediately. HK is your, your vertex. It's also the way I can get my axis of symmetry. It's always X equals H. Whatever that value for H is, that is my axis of symmetry. Okay? We talk about the sign. This formula is the formula that gives us the axis of symmetry. A lot of people want to talk about, oh, that's how you find the, 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 the vertex. Yes and no. It's not the vertex that you find. It's the X coordinate of the vertex. So be more specific. This is actually... Um, the axis of symmetry. So whenever I ask you to find the axis of symmetry, or if I've asked you to find the vertex, especially if it's in our previous form, if it's in quadratic form, then I can find the vertex quickly. Remember, I don't need to do it here because the vertex is staring me in the face. That would be way over kill if I tried to work this way. And besides, I can't even see B in this problem. It's hidden because I would have to expand everything before I could see it. All right, let's do a, try a little bit of an example. Describe the graph f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. So the two, when I say describe, what I mean by is give me the axis of symmetry and the vertex. And if you do what we did previously, um, negative 2, negative 1 is my vertex. The axis of symmetry was x equals negative 2. How do we find that? We use our little formula here. I'm not going to work that because I, I know that you can. Um, but pause it for a minute and try to go in and see if you can get the same answers that I got. You can go ahead and see that negative 2, negative 1 
makes perfect sense with my picture here. And if I were to draw a vertical line in here, that would be x equals negative 2. Okay, let's move on. Finding x-intercepts. Now, um, here again, I'm not teaching you anything you don't already know. Describe the graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. All right, here's the picture of the graph. If I need to find the axis of symmetry or my, my vertex, then I know that it's going to be, I can see in the picture it's going to be 3, 1. But let's find the x-intercepts. I can look here. Uh, there's an x-intercept, and here's an x-intercept. These are what we call zeros. It's where it goes through the x-axis. Okay, one of the best ways to find x-intercepts is to set your equation equal to zero, and then solve for x. Now, if you notice, if I were to foil this equation back together, I don't get this, what I have up top. All of the signs are different. Well, that's one of the nice things about zeros, I don't have to worry about that. I'm simply, I'm not trying to graph it, I'm simply wanting to know where it goes through the x-axis. So the very first thing I did when I was working one of these, I simply divided, it's all set equal to zero, so I just divided every single term, all four parts, zero, then the negative x squared, then 6x, and negative 8. I divided each one by negative 1. It made all of the signs change, which was a lot easier to work with. x squared minus 6x plus 8, I can deal with that a lot better than having a negative x squared. You don't want to have a negative x squared. It tends to get a little tricky with the negative signs. So when I factor that, you have x minus 2 and x minus 4, which makes my zeros x equals 2 and x equals 4. Pause the video if you haven't already, and I want you to try and solve uh, or factor this one like I did so that you can get these. Should be pretty simple. Pause it real quick and try that. Okay, let's move on. Finding the equation from a couple of things. This is um, ultimately, I'm going to be giving you a vertex and a single point. You may have never done this before. I'm asking you to, to write the equation of this parabola with only knowing the vertex and a single point that it passes through. Um, the, the easiest way for you to try this problem is to take the vertex form and plug these values in. You're going to use the vertex as h and k. The point is going to be x and y. This is a lot like how you find uh, y equals mx plus b. It's how you find a, the equation of a line when I have the slope and the y-intercept, or slope and the point. Pause the video. I want you to give it a shot and plug these values and see if you can find my a value and then plug all that back in using the vertex and A and see if you can come up with the equation. And then when you, when you come back, we'll, we'll see what the answer would be. This is what I did. You can see that here. Vertex is 1, 2. Point is 3, negative 6. This is the equation that I used. I went ahead. This is going to be my x. This is really hk, this is really x comma y, and so I'm going to plug each of these in. So I plugged 1 and 2 in for h and k. I took the 3 and the negative 6. I plugged those in for x and y. The only thing I don't know is my a. But if I go back and look at my picture, I know that a is going to have to definitely be negative. Uh, and I, and I, I'm almost positive that just by looking at this, it's, it looks like it's skinnier than it should be compared to x squared. So I, I think it's going to be bigger than 1. So let's look at it. And if we solve, you see that a turns out to be negative 2. So to finish this up, you take the a value, and you go back and you take your vertex value, and you're going to plug those directly in, and then you're done. What we always want to have in an equation when we're finished is we want to have y and we want to have x. Pause that, try it again if you didn't get it the first time. Here's your homework. I want you to take this and uh, I want you to work through this in class. If you finish it, then you don't have any homework. Um, but definitely try, especially with that last example, I definitely want you to try working these kinds of problems. 
if you can't do this one, um, go back and look at that screen, rewind it a little bit, and make sure that you can work it out and have it uh, at least know the steps to go through to get this done. Not very hard, but if you have never done one like this before, practice it till it's very easy and very comfortable. Okay? Be good for the sub, and I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow.